Hey everyone, welcome to uh, part two of Kafka Fundamentals. So let's get started. So we'll start with uh, Kafka producers. So what is a Kafka producer? A Kafka producer is a client application that sends data records to Kafka topics, right? So you need the data to be there in the Kafka cluster, you have to use Kafka producer. So if I think about the message that you want to send, right, the data that you want to send. So basically in Kafka, in Kafka terms, the message contains like two fields. You have a key, which is optional. You have a value while your actual data resides, right? So let's see like how the Kafka stores this particular message to different partitions. Suppose I have a Kafka topic which will have like three partition and three partition. I have just mentioned the index here. So zero to nine, uh, similarly for all three partition, right? So a Kafka message can have one more, uh, do have like a few more fields like a message timestamp and also metadata for, but those are not required for this illustration for as in terms of Kafka producer, correct? So, uh, this is how it works, right? So whenever you send any data, so suppose for, for, for the first instance, it's just like, I'm not sending any key. So it's just null. I'm just sending a message that is called as a, right? So which we, we cannot just stay as send as a uh, string. So we have to serialize it because we have to send it as a byte. So we can use any like string serializer. There are different serializers exist. So we serialize it, then we, uh, send the data to your Kafka topic, right? So suppose uh, we do not provide any key for this. So this can be stored in a round robin fashion to any of the partition. So for this example, if you see that this goes to this partition zero because I don't have any uh, keys for this. Similarly, suppose I have a message called as B, this also key as null, this will go to partition one, right? So this is going in round robin fashion, but Whenever I am sending any message with some key and the value as C, this is where the partition will be decided by the producer and the producer will know like in which partition the data should go, right? So how this is getting decided? This is getting decided by a key partitioner, key partitioning, right? So what it does, for example, let's think that the key partitioning we are using that is modulus, right? So the key value modulus of number of partition, what the value for this, this value is one. So this particular message will go to this particular partition, correct? Similarly for different partition key, so the, the modulus will be calculated. Okay, this is one, so this goes to one. Similarly for three, modulus is zero. So this will go to partition zero. Similarly, suppose you have a one more message which will be having like the same key, but different value. So the same uh, modulus will be created. So it will go to partition zero. So if you notice that any key that those are same, right? This goes to the same partition, right? So if I have one more uh, message with three as a key, it will go to partition zero, right? So if you see that on each partition uh, messages order, we have already discussed this, but there is no guarantee on the order for, uh, across the partition, right? So whenever any consumer is reading across partition, there is no order guarantee, but order is guaranteed within the partition because it's always appended on the end, correct? So uh, for the example, I have just used a very uh, uh, simple partitioning logic that is modulus of three. But in Kafka, we use Murmur2 algorithm to calculate this particular hash, um, hash partitioning, right? So you can read more about this algorithm. How does it work? Because it's just a mathematical formula, but at the end of the day, the, you get the partition number and partition nodes where to send the data. Right. So this is all about partitions, but there is uh, something called as Kafka producer acknowledgement setting. What it does it, uh, 
if you remember we have talked about that whenever we want to produce some data that goes to the partition leader right and this partition has like two replicas correct so whenever i'm sending the data i'm sending it to partition leader but the replica will pull the data from partition leader and it will copy to their own location okay but what happens is suppose i'm sending any data right and i want to get an acknowledgement that if my data was properly copied or not so this is where the acknowledgement setting that you can set on the producer so acknowledgement zero means the producer does not wait for any acknowledgement providing the lowest latency but no guarantees of delivery so it just like you can think about like this is a asynchronous operation right so you send the data you forget about it you uh, you do not carry uh, worry that if uh, the data is properly uh, written to all the partition leader or all the replicas you do not worry about that so this can be some of the use cases that it required because it's carried is the lowest latency right and there is something called acknowledgement one so what it does is the producer waits for an acknowledgement only from the leader ensuring data is received but not fully replicated okay what it means is i i send the data to partition leader partition leader got the data and it has written to their own disk then partition leader sends an acknowledgement back to producer that okay i have written the data you can carry on with your uh, other work right but what it doesn't guarantee is the it doesn't guarantee that the re, uh, data was properly replicated to their replicas or not right that's the acknowledgement one correct and there is one more acknowledgement that acknowledgement one what it does is the producer awaits for the acknowledgement from all the in sync replicas offering the highest durability and reliability so it it will be the slowest because once the data is written to partition leader it has to be replicated to all its replicas right and you cannot producer cannot uh, carry on their work until unless it gets replicated and we got the acknowledgement back right and this setting is something that you can set on the producer level so whenever we are discussing on the code so this is all in theory so whenever we discuss on the code i'll be explaining like how to set this up how to wait for the acknowledgement everything correct and uh, now we got the data now we want to consume the data that is the role of kafka consumers so a kafka consumer is a client application that reads or subscribe to data records from kafka topics processing them in re real time from a specific partition or across all partition is a consumer group correct so you can define like if you want to read just one partition or if you want to uh, read from across all the partition right so this is one diagram so basically what happens is yeah whenever you are sending any data right you say you serialize it right so it, it it's a binary format it's a byte format that you you are sending the data into right it's a bytes so whenever i want to consume the data from kafka i cannot just directly read it because it will be on byte format and that doesn't make any sense right so we have to deserialize it so if you see that i have the keys were uh, integer so i can use a serializer called as integer deserializer similarly if it is a string string uh, uh, then if the value is string i can use a string deserializer as a value so once we do deserializer it will become as a object right so it it will become a integer and it will become a string right so what is a kafka consumer groups so a kafka consumer can read data from multiple partition of a to topic concurrently through though each partition is processed sequentially within the consumer right so what it does is uh, the advantage of using a kafka consumer group is that consumers within the group coordinate to distribute the workload of reading from different partitions if you remember that uh, each topic is partition right suppose you have a, like 1000 uh, partition for a topic suppose you get a a lot of data into kafka you have decided that okay i need like 1000 partition i want to distribute the work within the consumer so you can create a consumer group which will define okay how many consumers you need suppose 1000 partition then you can have a consumer group of 1000 consumers right so it will go to your uh, topic and it will read the data concurrently 
So this is how you scale your consumer application so that you can read faster. And this is the application that you can do. So if you're using Spark Structure Streaming, uh, Spark Structure Streaming creates a consumer groups uh, internally. So you don't worry about it. But if you do not want to use Spark Structure Streaming, if you want to just create like a Python application, then you can create consumer group and can read the data concurrently. Okay. Uh, so just for like uh, as like diagram if you see there are like five partitions exist and I created a consumer group application which will have like three consumers and three consumers can read the partition concurrently right so consumer group application will take care of coordinating like uh, which consumer is reading from which partition and if you see the consumer one is reading zero and one concurrently similarly for consumer two consumer three but one partition cannot be read by two consumer right so that's not so it's a one-to-one -one mapping correct because it, you don't want duplicates right so each partition will have its own data you want to read from the consumer uh, as one-to-one -one mapping so i think with this i'm i'm ending this video and um, with this i think i have covered all the basics all the theoretical uh, of kafka fundamentals i hope that you under understood all this concept and if you have any doubts uh, just comment on the comment section i'll just read uh, read on this and i'll reply you back uh, whenever i can and um, as quickly as i can and i hope that you're enjoying this series and looking forward for the next video thank you guys bye bye